What's up dolls? It's your girl Miss Benjamin back at it again with another video. Today I am going to give you guys the tea, the sauce, the gems, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to be letting you guys know 10 things that you will need to do before you go ahead and get this BBL, before you go ahead and fly out to Miami, before you go ahead and put that deposit down. These are 10 things I feel like every girl should know before they go get the surgery i know personally i promised you guys a one month post op video but i'm beyond one now, march 12th will be officially two months for me so i didn't feel like it was going to be appropriate to give you guys a one month post op video because i'm not one month post op anymore i'm past that so honestly it's like you're going to get more even more information than you would have gotten if i would have did a post op a one month post op so today's video is sponsored by nonetheless K. Lips Cosmetics. I have been working with this brand just a few weeks and she has been super sweet. She sent me her red collection. So these are the lip glosses. This is this was like her Valentine's Day collection. I have one of them on right now. I actually have two of them on. I like to mix. I like to do the darker color on the outer lines of my lips and of course the lighter color on the middle. It kind of helps give it that ombre lip effect. And I usually don't do reds, but this girl got me going out of my comfort zone right now. Like I'm super excited. My boo, he loves me when I wear red and it's super rare because I just feel like I haven't found the red that I really love. And the fact that she has all these different shades, there's no way that you can get a, a shade of red that you don't love. So you guys can go ahead and grab these lip glosses before they sell out. They are super cute, super matte, and they even smell good. Like I smelled a few of them, they smell amazing. Like especially, especially I'm gonna love this one because I'm gonna be able to put this over any of my new glosses just to give me a little shimmer, you know, when I get a little bored. And I especially love the darkest one. And then, the medium one. The darkest one is called Vixen. The next shade up from that is called Rouge. The next shade up from that is called Ruby, yes. And this reminds me of Ruby from MAC. It's very bright and in your face and it's like super sexy on date night. And then this is what the lip gloss is coming. I love the packaging. It's definitely customized. I love that it's customized. And I love that it has the ingredients on the back. And it says that it's not tested on animals. So that's great. Um, yeah, so go ahead and grab these lip glosses before they sell out. Get you some K.Lips Cosmetics, girl. You want me later, girl. <laughs> Let's start getting into the 10 things that I want you girls to know before surgery. First thing I want you guys to know is to call your bank before you go. Tell them to up your daily limit. When I got to um, Miami, I wasn't able to pay for my surgery because my daily limit is probably like $1,000 or $800 or something like that. And I had to pay $2,000 remainder of the money on my bank card and I paid the rest in cash. And that's just something that is simple, easy, and you can do that a week a week before, let them know that you're traveling and get your daily limit up. Also, pricing, I wanna discuss how much I paid. My doctor charges more than the average doctor in Miami, but it's because he is great at what he does. I'm not gonna front, like, I got in surgery before, this is my second round, and I feel like you get what you pay for. <laughs> you get what you pay for. Um, there's great doctors that are a cheaper price rate, but he still gives me, he, he gave me exactly what I wanted. I wanted a natural looking butt, 
and he gave that to me. I had a shelf booty and I was over the shelf. I was over the shelf, but his rate was $7,500 for the surgery alone. Because I had a surgery before and it will be a revision, basically him fixing someone else's work, I paid an extra $1,500 for that, as well as $800 for um, arm lipo, arm lipo, and inner thigh lipo. But once he seen me, he said, you know, me getting a BBL, he has so much work to do on my butt, plus my thighs. He felt like if I were to get arms, I would be bleeding way too much. The butt will cause the arms to bleed. The arms will cause the, blood, the butt to bleed. And um, he felt like it would just be safer for my health if I just do inner thigh, and a BBL and even he didn't even want to do the inner thigh because he felt like I was going to get skin sagging and that is something that I definitely did get uh skin sagging but even though I'm happy I still got um inner thigh lipo because it's I could see the difference I could feel the difference um my thighs is not rubbing together as much I still need to work out I still need to get in the gym I still got problem areas no way did he fix every insecurity that I have, but he definitely gave me what I wanted, which is a slope, slope booty. <laughs> so I'm happy with that. Number two, um, take stool softener with you. Stool softener is going to make your stool softer. <laughs> Basically, after surgery, you're not going to be able to use the bathroom. You're not going to have like uh the normal bowel movements that you would have your back is going to be sore your back is what helps you push the poop out so you need something to help you to make it soft so that way while you're in the recovery home or wherever you're staying you will be using the bathroom throughout the week because you don't want to not use the bathroom and then get home and deal with massive constipation pain or even your booty hole ripping like honestly i went through that my first surgery so i I felt like that's one of the most important things that I wanted to stress to everyone in this video. Grab you some stool softener or a light laxative and take that stool softener once a day while you're out there. And take it um, a couple hours after you get out of surgery. I promise you, I was the first one to use the bathroom in the recovery house and all the girls was looking at me like, what? You used the bathroom? Wow. Like, yes, I was one of the first and it made me feel better. Imagine eating all of that stuff for five, six days and you don't use the bathroom. That's not normal. So definitely take you some stool softener with you. You are going to thank me later. And when you get your surgery and you take your stool softener, come back to this video and comment and tell me that tell me thank you <laughs> give me my flowers while they're here because i know you're gonna be like damn melissa said that number three let's move on to urinal bbl pillow and some supplies that you will be needing to get this surgery this is my bbl pillow i got this from amazon um if i remember the exact link i'll go ahead and link it down below i paid about I think about $60 for this. I'll find out the exact price, but y'all didn't see that. <laughs> anyway, moving along. I ain't even gonna worry about that. That's gonna stay where it's at. That BBL pillow, uh, I would say that get the cheapest one you can find and use you some regular pillows because those pillows are way too thick and, and I feel like they only work for when you wanna use the bathroom, you wanna do number two. You put them on the end of the toilet seat, you wrap them with some wee-wee pads, and you sit down and you use the bathroom. That's how they taught me how to use the bathroom at the recovery home. So that's mostly what I was using that for. My car is too little for me to be sitting on a BBL pillow. My head is gonna be banging against the ceiling. I'm a tall girl already, so. That BBL pillow wasn't really to me a, the best investment and I barely used it. I used it on the plane, but girl, I got this dude to get up and switch seats with me. He was super cool and he let me lay down. So that's how I got on my flight home. So this is the urinal. Let's move on to the urinal. You're gonna need this to use the bathroom. I recommend a better quality one because you're gonna be needing it for weeks, okay? For at least a month and a half you're gonna need this i've stopped using it because i started sitting down but you're gonna need this especially while you're in the house number four number four is when i came out of surgery i felt like you girls need to know that it's a possibility that you will faint i fainted about 
four times while I was out there. Um, I fainted the first day and the nurse was literally right in front of me. She got me up out the bed. I needed to use the bathroom and she was holding my arm and I still fainted. You are going to be super weak. You are going to be like not coherent with what's going on. Like when I fainted, the, all I heard was the nurse yelling at me like, get up girl, get up. Open your eyes, open your eyes, open your eyes. And I'm like, I'm hearing her, but I'm not really hearing her. And it was, if it wasn't for like another girl passing my room, running in to help me get up, it was like, damn. And I fell right on my booty. <laughs> I fell right on my butt, but immediately I got up and got on my knees and all, on all four. And then when I got on all four, that's when she was like, wake up, wake up, like get up. But you will faint if you're anything like me. Um, I don't really know the reason why I was fainting, but I could tell you it's obviously because of the anesthesia. Coming out of anesthesia, you're going to be, you're going to have, you know, certain symptoms. You're going to be weak as hell. You're going to be weak. You're going to be weak as hell, okay? So, definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, to help with paint, with uh, fainting, to help with fainting, she would give me alcohol wipes, little alcohol pads to smell that will wake you up and drinking water. So while you're walking to the bathroom, have the nurses have a little cup of water waiting for you throughout the walk. So just in case you feel woozy, you could just take a couple of sips because that was helping. But other than that, I don't know what else you could do to prevent that. Number five, stay at a recovery home. <laughs> I wrote it in big letters, stay at a recovery home. I stayed at an extended stay hotel with my sister last time I got surgery and it was cool, but you know, I needed a 24 hour assistance every day to the day I left. <laughs> and my sister wasn't really with that. You know, she wasn't equipped to really help me the way I really needed to. I needed somebody to wipe my booty while I'm using the bath. Not really wipe my booty, but like, I needed somebody to wake me the first day. I needed somebody to help me get out of bed. I needed somebody to clean up all the mess, all the fluids that's gonna be coming out of your body. I needed somebody to help me walk to the bathroom every trip. I needed someone to bring me food, bring me water, bring me my medication. So you're gonna need that 24 hour assistance and a recovery home, they know what they're doing. Do your research, find one that's really good. I'm gonna put mine down below at six. Get your Faha taken in. I wasted about $400 on Fajas. Like, I have the original Faja. It got too big for me. Once I got home, I went and tried to get another Colombian Faja from a little, you know, strip mall. I got a 4X that ended up fitting. No, I ended up getting a 3X that ended up being too tight for me the first week I was back home. Um, but I kept it. I went back and I bought a 4X. And the 4X um, was perfect for the first two weeks. Once the first two weeks was over, I went into the second one, which is the 3X. And that one actually fits me good. And I'll be rotating between them. If I don't wanna, if I'm hurting and I don't want too much compression, I'll wear the 4X one while the 3X one is in the shower. If I don't want, you know, vice versa. So also I have this, um, I'll show you guys. I have this soft one. I want you to see my cooch. <laughs> also, I have this soft one from when I go out. You can wear it under your clothes, under your dress. So, yeah, I love this one. The only thing though, it rolls up my thighs. So it's annoying. I can't stay with it for too, 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 too long. <laughs> I don't stay with it for too long because it's not the best compression. The best compression is a 3XL one. And to be honest with you guys, I'm over wearing Fajas. It's been a month and three, four weeks. I kind of want to get into something else, like maybe waist training, because I feel like the Fajas are not tight enough at the... Um, at the waist and then they're too tight in certain areas it's hold bringing down my shoulders it's hurting my shoulders when i sleep so if you guys have any alternatives or any different type of fives that are comfortable that still snatch that stomach in link that down below i need that asap <laughs> at this point i'll pay whatever you know 
because fajas are very important and going out you must wear your faja i went out a few times and i i suffered the consequences the next day i swelled up honey i swelled up so get your fajas taken in if you can or be prepared to spend a little bit of money on different type of fajas because you don't want to have just one fajas it's just unrealistic i also bought one from amazon which was 80 dollars, and it completely sucked it had no shape it was like faja for white girls no shade love my white girls but it was like faja for that type of shape number seven drink lots of fluids um drink lots of fluids after surgery like you are going to drain like crazy if you drink fluids the fluid that they put in your body is going to drain in three ways through your urine through your incisions and through your, your um poop so it's good that sometimes your incisions might close so it's good that you're drinking a lot of fluids so you can get those fluids out of your body through your urine and you are going to pee more than you've ever peed in your life honey i peed like gallons while i was out there like i would pee like two gallons a day like it was crazy and and it was so hard to stand and pee and i would be peeing for like no lie like two minutes <laughs> it was crazy my pee is just now getting back to normal but they put a lot of fluids in your body so you have to drink water i recommend drink protein shakes and sure any and then get yourself back to health pineapples water gatorade those things are going to get you back on track <laughs> Okay, they're going to rejuvenate your body. Drink soup, drink, um, eat a lot of fish, eat a lot of shrimp, eat a lot of rice. Even, um, don't eat a lot of rice, but eat rice. Eat, um, take a look. If you guys really wanna know what I was eating every day, take a look at my first vlog. I show you all the meals I was eating each day. So you, you need to eat more than normal. You need to eat two times what you would normally eat right after surgery because you have to get your body back like it's like your body just got attached and it's trying to recover and it's trying to get its you know tails moving so you have to replenish that body number eight you will get these annoying sharp little pains okay and i was scared because i didn't know if that was normal but i watched another girl's video and she said it too you will get these sharp pains out of nowhere. They will be quick, but they will be painful. You're gonna be like, what the hell? Like, ah, what the fuck? Like, I'd have been in air, out in the club and I'm like this to my back because I would get a sharp pain and it goes all over your body, like from your knees up, I would say. Even <laughs> thighs, butt, hips, all of that. So you're gonna get that sharp pain. I'm not sure yet if it's perfectly normal because I didn't get these type of pains in my first surgery. Like I said, this surgery was a lot harder. Um, so keep in mind, they're annoying. Hopefully they get past. This girl said she was getting it for like four or five months. I'm, already, I'm only two months, about to be two months. So I hope they stop. That's the only thing that makes me feel like, damn bitch, you're not recovered yet. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm recovered and I'm not. I'm not. Number nine, book your massages ahead of time. Don't wait till you come back to book your massages. That's gonna be a big mistake because you're going to be going through emotions. You're gonna be angry. You're gonna want your massages right there on the moment. And if somebody flakes on you or if somebody doesn't make it and you didn't already establish that you doing stuff last minute, they're not really, you know, it's like, it's just not a good a situation. You're gonna be in pain. You're gonna want those massages like almost every other day when you come home. That's how much I was getting them. And put aside about $1,500, I say, for aftercare, fajas and massages. Do find a package where you can do all your massages and then do, I would say 20. I'm still getting massages, but I really can't afford them anymore. They're getting super expensive. But I would say 20 a total of 20 when you come back. Get a total of four when you're away. They're gonna help you. They're gonna make you feel better. The only thing that ultimately makes you feel better is going to be time.
<laughs> I'm trying to rush through this because I'm trying to go out and have some drinks. I'm always going out. And it's like another thing, you're going to feel so depressed and sad in the house the first couple of days and couple of weeks. You're going to be like, ugh. Oh, one more thing. I think this is number 10. Book wheelchair assistance. You're going to need wheelchair assistance when you come back from Miami. Call whatever airline you booked with. Call and tell them to put wheelchair assistance on your uh, um, departure flight, like when you're ready to come home. This will save you a lot of pain and frustration. They're going to wheel you right through TSA. You're going to be the first to go through. You are going to, they're going to wheel you right to your gate. You're going to be able to like get right on your flight easy peasy. And um, if you're traveling to Florida, uh, to be honest, my flight was smooth. I didn't, you know, if you get, to, when you get to cut the line, the airport ain't all that bad, you know? So definitely, definitely get some wheelchair assistance. I would highly, highly recommend it. And be nice to them because they love you your fat ass everywhere. Be nice to them. Don't be having an attitude because they know what we did. <laughs> They're going to make fun of y'all. <laughs> they know that what you, what you on a wheelchair for, okay? A young girl on a wheelchair, be nice. Tip them too. Make sure you give them a little tip. And then when you touch down in your city, it's going to be wheelchair assistance as well to bring you to your bags. And yeah, make sure you tip everybody. Um, this surgery is life changing. It's very rewarding, but it's also very scary. Uh, it's almost like, I'm going to be honest, it's almost like dying and coming back to life. Okay. It feels like you got hit by a bus. The pain is excruciating. It is nothing to play with. It's nothing that you probably ever felt before. Some girls were up and at it, moving around, shaking and grooving. Some girls like me who are bigger initially had a harder time. And also even, I don't, wouldn't even go off of your weight, I would go off of your health. Some girls were bigger than me and they were good. Some girls were smaller than me and they were struggling. So everybody's different, everybody's body is different. So you need to like, mentally prepare yourself not just physically not just buy everything you need and put the money down mentally prepare yourself for what's about to happen you're about to be drained you're about to have so many people you know inquiring what you're going through checking on you you're not going to be able to even really speak to them because you're going to be so out of it um you know so just keep in mind that you're going to kind of be alone for a couple of weeks your friends are going to be out living their lives and you're going to be at home uh, recovering and feeling like, what the f did I just do? <laughs> what the f did I just do? So, with that being said, like, think about this. Prepare this at the right time of your life. Figure out when you're going to have some downtime. Figure out who you could leave your kids with. Figure out who you could stay with after surgery. Who is because when you come back from surgery, you're still going to need help. You're still gonna need that support. Like that support in the recovery home is very like ugh, I treasure it so much. And I was the last few days I was complaining I wanted to leave that place. But like what? Now that I got home and I didn't have nobody to put my socks on for me. Nobody to put my blanket on for me because I was cold. Nobody to like get me something to drink, get me some food. Like, come on. You you gotta prepare yourself for this. It's no joke. And I feel like girls are just flying out left and right, doing it, doing it, doing it. And they're not really doing the research that needs to be done. I did my research. I went through this two times and I feel like this time was definitely better because I'm wiser, I'm smart, I'm older. And I know what questions to ask when I get in there. I know what to tell the doctor. I know what pictures to show. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, educate yourself on this. Educate yourself as much as you can. Um, join those surgery groups, those Facebook groups. Like, talk to people who wanna give that information out. Find girls who want to share their experience. Every girl don't want to share. So don't be harassing everybody that you see got their body done. Find women who who are sharing already. Who, you know, like, <laughs> that's another thing. Like, definitely do your research. You're going to make it through. You're going to be a bad <laughs> after. 
gonna be a bad bitch after. You're gonna make it through the surgery. Uh, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be probably be the hardest thing you've ever done, but you are going to get through it, okay? You're gonna get through it, trust me. Um, anybody who needs somebody to talk to, y'all can hit me up. I respond to all my comments. Um, so far on every video, I've been trying to respond to every single comment. I've been trying to answer y'all questions. Um, I got a bunch of in Instagram questions and I hope that I answered all of them. Uh, I'm trying to think. Recovery time. Recovery time is going to be three months. After three months, you're, you should be healed. But um, you should still waist train after three months. I don't recommend you keep wearing the faja because your body needs to learn how to survive on its own, you know? Your body needs to start moving and shaking on its own. And if you wear the faja for six, to seven, eight, nine months, like, you're ODing. <laughs> you're overdoing it. You want your body to be able to hold itself together. You don't want to be out in the street and your stomach is falling because you're never out of your faja. Like, I don't have moments where my, stuff, my fat was dropping. But it's because I'm still in the early stages. Now, once my body heals up, it should be no reason why my fat is just dropping. Unless I'm just eating and I'm not taking care of myself. But if I'm working out eating, everything should start tightening up. Everything should start working on its own to where you don't need to be constricting yourself constantly anymore. And another thing, swollen feet. My feet swells up every time I'm standing for too many hours. I don't wear my compression socks. That's something that I should have done um, every day, but I'm kind of tired of them. They itch, they're irritating, they're super thick, they're super tight. I got long nails, it's hard for me to put that on, let alone a faja, <laughs> like it's too much. But uh, wear your compression socks, they're important. My feet are swelling, I'm just dealing with it. Um, I've never had my feet swell with my previous surgery. Like this, this is what I'm saying. Like this surgery is very different. I've gone through the motions with this surgery. Very emotional, very sad, very like, ugh. The first time it was like sadness. What the hell did I do? But it was quicker. Recovery was quicker. I was back to work quicker, um, you know? So everything was a little bit more faster during the first surgery. So keep that in mind with your age and your health. Keep in mind that you may want a round two. Keep in mind that, you know, your body may not come out the way you want it to come out. But that's okay. Like, you should be grateful that you even have the opportunity to book a surgery. These surgeries are not easy to even get. You know, it took calling the clinic, calling me aesthetics, like, a bunch of times to even book my surgery. So the fact that you got one and you got a new body, just be grateful. Try not to nitpick at yourself too much. Try to try to like work on the other areas yourself. You know, like try not to be so. Oh, I gotta be perfect. I, I gotta look perfect because it's not realistic. And these girls that look perfect, they're probably not even happy. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, they gotta do a lot to keep that up. Okay. And give yourself room to grow. You don't want to get surgery back to back to back and then. When you get older and you actually need it, when you actually have kids with the boobs and everything, the lips, give yourself room to grow. That's my advice with surgery. Don't go crazy, like, don't go crazy. Uh, if you need it, okay. I'm pro-surgery 100%. I've got it twice, but this surgery was because I needed it. I felt like my butt was too high. I, I couldn't take it no more. It was overbearing. It was like everywhere I went, like, oh, booty, booty, booty. That's all I was being known for, and I don't want that. I wanted to like have something where when I get older, when I have children, I could be like the sexy mom, but at the same time with my sweats on, you won't even really know nothing, you know? And I'm still gonna have to get there. I'm still gonna have to lose weight and work out to get there. But I have a big, big, big boost with the surgery. I got a big boost. For Mia Aesthetics, they have two facilities. The first facility is gonna go, is where you're gonna go to get your pre-op. They're going to basically talk to you about everything that's gonna happen and then they're going to give you a faja to try on and um, basically send you home. Everything was quick. It, I, I honestly say me aesthetics, they're fast. They work fast. The only thing I can say, the recovery home, the driver messed up as far as picking up, they was picking up too many girls at one time. So, but, but other than that, like the, the clinic itself, 
it was decent. The 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 nurses they were nice. They were helpful. You know they weren't the best, but they were helpful. They were nice, and um, everything went quickly. I didn't have to sit and wait for my surgery. As soon as they rolled me in, as soon as I got in the clinic, I got my surgery done an hour later. Um, as far as the time the surgery took, I don't know how long it took, but I was back home with the sun. The sun did not beat me home. So I was definitely out of surgery like three, four o'clock, and I went in around eight. So, and again, shout out to K Lips Cosmetics for sponsoring this video. I love all these lipsticks. Go ahead and cop these lipsticks. I will put the link down below. Thank you. If there's anything that I missed, please let me know. I will do another video talking about more stuff. Let me know what y'all want me to answer. Let me know what y'all think about my body. You know, let me know what y'all think, girls. Talk to me. Talk to me, okay? <laughs> But thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys waiting for this video. I know I took forever. But um, I knew I was going to drop some gems. And when, I, when it gets to you, you're going to receive it. And hopefully this helps anybody going through surgery or going to get surgery. I love you dolls. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And all my Benji babes, please subscribe to join the Benjamin family. I love you all. Thanks for tuning in.